liberation that let success so high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Last week, the offices of a director of one of India's largest crypto exchanges, Wazirx, were raided. The Enforcement Directorate also froze accounts worth 64.67 crore rupees for assisting fraud instant loan apps. Despite a crackdown by the Reserve Bank of India and the government, digital lending apps have continued to operate. The central bank has time and again also expressed reservations against cryptocurrencies. The central bank had termed cryptocurrencies a clear danger in its latest financial stability report. I'm Ishan Gera and you're watching the Business Standard Banking Show. In today's episode, we'll discuss RBI's monetary policy decision and the consequent action by banks to raise lending rates. We have an interview lined up with Karur Vaisa Bank MD and CEO B. Ramesh Babu in our Banking for You section, our experts explain what digital banking units are. And our banking expert, Tamal Bandopadhyay, discusses the September RBI MPC meeting and the rate hike expectations. In our last episode, we asked you a question about the privatization of public sector banks. We'll discuss the responses at the show's end and also ask our next poll question. So stay with us till the end of the show. First, here's a look at the banking developments of the week. The central bank's decision to raise the repo rate by 50 basis point was in line with the BS poll. At 5.4%, rates are now above the pre-pandemic level. However, the central bank is still behind its developed economy peers in rate hikes. A business standard analysis found that Bank of England had raised rates by 1.65 percentage points since March 2020, whereas the Fed has instituted a 2.25 percentage point rate hike. In contrast, rates in India have gone up by 1.4 percentage points. Besides the rate hike, the governor announced liquidity measures like variable repo rate and variable reverse repo rate auctions. The central bank has retained its inflation and growth forecast for FY23. The future course of rate action remains predicated upon action by global central banks and management of inflation expectations. As the central bank raised rates, banks quickly passed the rate hikes to their borrowers. Banks increased the external benchmark linked rates. Bank of Baroda, Punjab National Bank and ICICI Bank raised rates on Saturday following RBI's decision. The repo rate linked rate for Bank of Baroda stands at 7.95% with a 2.55 percentage point premium over the repo rate. The rate for PNB went up from 7.4 to 7.9%. ICICI Bank's EBLR, linked to the repo rate, stands at 9.1%. After the Reserve Bank of India on July 6 announced that banks could raise money from FCNRB and NRE deposits without any interest cap, HDFC seems to have made some serious gains. As per reports, the bank garnered $300 million in NRE deposits by offering 50 basis points more than the prevailing rates. Most of the deposits were attracted from the Middle East. The RBI move is expected to fund the inflow of dollars as investors flee to safe haven assets. RBI has been trying various measures to keep the rupee below the $80-$12 mark. While private banks have been doing well, public sector insurers face problems. A recent audit by CAG found that all four public sector insurers posted an aggregate loss of 26,364 crore rupees between 2016-17 and 2020-21. The report further said that the losses were due to group health insurance policies where the premium charge was less and the claim outgo was more compared to retail policies. In terms of coverage, public health insurers have been losing ground to private insurers recently. Health insurance coverage also remains low in the country. Karur Vesha Bank has been scripting a success story as well. In an interview with our banking editor Manojit Saha, B. Ramesh Babu, MD and CEO of Karur Vesya Bank, talks about the performance in the first quarter of 2022-23 and the bank's 100-year journey. Welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. Old generation private sector lender Karur Vesya 
Reserve Bank more than 100 years old. The Karur headquarter lender never chased growth like some of the high street banks in Bombay. Still, it managed to draw investors' attention. The bank reported a healthy set of numbers in the first quarter with improved margin and lower provisions. The return on asset has also shown improving trend and has now remained over 1% for the second consecutive quarter. To speak more about the bank, we have today uh, B. Ba Ramesh Babu, Managing Director and Chief Executive uh, Officer of uh, Karur Vaisha Bank. Mr. Babu will also complete two years as MD and CEO on July 30. Mr. Babu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manajit. Thanks for the opportunity. This is a bank in the 106 years, continuously we have been declaring uh, the, the, we have been declaring profit. So none of the years we had any issue. So that is the legacy of this bank. Right, sir. So I was coming to the performance. Uh, the performance, as I said, in the first quarter was very good. But the bank is, as you said, uh, as we know, it's 100 year old. The loan book of the bank as on, as on June end was 59,612 crore. And the deposits are of 71,168 crore. Uh, do you, after 100 years, you have done about 60,000 crores of deposit. Do you think that the bank has lost out to competition over the years by um, in increasing the market share? I, I see we need to look at it in a different lens. Because initially, when the bank started, so it was catering to local traders and all in a limited area of operation they were doing and all. The pan-India presence and that uh, uh, scope enlargement, these things have come around 20, 25 years back. At that time, we started enlarging into other areas and we started focusing on the MSME. If you look at our portfolio also, around 2008, 9, something like that, we have started entered into the wholesale corporate. And we were there from some time. And in 2019 or 18, something like that, we have entered into the retail. Till such time, few of the customers, their requirement was handled and all. Not We were not aggressive in the retail. So that way, if you look at it progressively, vertical after vertical, we have grown. And now we can say that entire suite of products, what all are required, either wholesale or retail, everything is being offered. With the momentum, what we have gained in the first quarter during last year, also you would have seen that our advances growth is... 15% if you do not reckon the right off. So the moment of what we have gained, so we are reasonably confident that the required market share will be able to get it. Now the bank has about uh, 822 branches as of 31st March uh, uh, 2022, uh, but half of the branches are in, in Tamil Nadu. There are branches in, in Andhra and Telangana and Karnataka and a few more in Maharashtra and Gujarat. So you never thought of becoming a pan-India branch with opening more branches in the northern or eastern parts of the country? No, uh, you, we have a branch in Patna. We have a branch in Indore. We have a branch in Chandigarh. So different parts, Kanpur we have. So likewise, different locations, we have the branches. But the concentration is in the south and the west. So where still we feel that lot of potential which we need to exploit is still there. In the West also it is there, but that way, whenever we are going for the expansion, we are looking at what are the opportunities available and based on that, we are going there. The, uh, I, I saw your post earning presentation. It says interesting statistics. It said that 68% uh, of the corporate loans are less than 100 crore with average ticket size of 37.72 crore. It looked like it's a conscious strategy to stay away from the large corporate, the large wholesale loans. Why is this so? It is not the question of staying away. So when the infrastructure boom was going on in India around 11, 12 and all, so in the bandwagon, we also joined. But we need to understand what's the size of the bank. If we cannot compete with a bigger bank, so we need to understand the business model. In this process, we had some hits and misses also were there in the corporate portfolio. So then with the learnings, what all we had, uh, we in the last three, four years, we have put so many uh, restrictive conditions and say internally saying that the one of the conditions what i can say so 125 crores beyond that we will not take an exposure we thought that because we suppose some tomorrow something happens we may not be able to absorb that shock that is one thing likewise what we thought we need to know the business model of the particular unit then only you need to and third thing what we thought is to prefer the sole banking wherever this bank because also construction is there, three to four banks are there, where you also matter a lot, these sort of thing. And fourth, what we thought manufacturing also let us do up to 75 crore, which comprise of MSMEs where the pricing power and the yields are better. Even if the hits are there also, which your normal earnings, what all you have, you'll be able to absorb that loss very comfortably. Otherwise, let us say 300 crore account goes bad. 
suppose let us say your profit itself for a quarter is 250 crore so one quarter profit is wiped out it may not be good for the organization so that way we have diversified we have put these restrictions intention is to grow granular but if you look at our 2016 corporate portfolio it was 35 percent of the whole book now it has come down to 23 because of the shift we have taken for moving from uh, lumpy accounts to the granular so 23 percent one, one, one more thing i want to say in the process we have achieved one more thing the quality of the portfolio we have achieved many of the accounts which are not good also we have exited now if you look at it the whole bank the sma 30 plus is below one percent out of that the corporate book is minuscule under sma 30 plus so the quality of the book has improved and we have tighter controls on this and overall the granularization also has happened so you're saying 23 percent only 23 percent of your book is wholesale loans corporate loans okay. and the remaining is is retail and agriculture and all absolutely absolutely you're right uh, what is the share of whole, uh, home loans in your portfolio yeah we have other segments are also there one is a commercial is next big segment for us and retail is there retail also constitutes around 23 24 percent of our portfolio out of that more than 50 percent constitutes a home loan because mortgage loans home loan as well as lab both we together we treat it as a mortgage loan so that occupies a major portion of our retail loans and next comes the jewel loan and the personal loans what all are there because of our customers we effectively use our analytics and artificial intelligence based on that we dive the data and all we'll take out and that we are doing that way our focus on the retail loan is particularly mortgage jewel and personal loan and this year uh, we want to push these two products sir you have revised the credit growth target for fi23 from from 12 percent to 15 percent what made you revise the credit growth yeah, if you see in the initial month april month things were slightly uncertain how it's going to pan out how so with all these things people were talking about recession how things will move so we wanted to be cautious and we thought under promising and over delivering will be much better and we'll have a clarity also we thought let us go for a 12 percent but after seeing the first quarter uh, progress and all both on year on year as well as in the quarter on quarter if you look at it so we have grown around 15 percent in advances if we reckon uh, right off also otherwise 14 percent then we thought the first quarter itself usually is a sluggish quarter when the first quarter we are able to do well rest of the quarters will be able to do much better and all which of the segments uh, you think will contribute to this growth so basically when the bank started our focus was on the traders so even today if you look at it 32 percent of our portfolio is coming from the commercial segment there are two advantages one is the portfolio is granular uh, if you see the ticket size in our presentation we have shown it, it comes to around 40 42 lakhs and the yields are also much better 9 to 9.5 percent yield we get it and all and majority of them is collateralized so but these people they require some sort of a hand holding the credit what the bank has is the connect with the customers so that is the reason if you are able to leverage the goodwill what we have and the legacy what we have and we will be able to do much better in the commercial so that is the reason this year we want to focus much on the commercial which we plan that around 15 percent growth we are planning simultaneously on the retail because it's also another granular portfolio we wish to grow around 15 percent there agriculture if you look at it majority of the portfolio goes into agricultural gold loans south as you know a lot of uh, uh, the fascination for the gold is there they come and they pledge the gold also if in case of a need is there that's why we are going for the gold loan as it is we are growing at 16 percent in this so that way agriculture we call it usually as a ram sector one is in the retail agriculture and msme these segment we are going to grow and now of course because wholesale is also equally important but one thing we need to keep in mind our wholesale what we talk may not be a real wholesale for the big banks because when i talk about 100 100 crore 100 crore may be a retail segment for a big bank but for us it's a wholesale so 25 crore to about 25 crore when we are calling it as a wholesale segment so 25 to 125 above 120 if I also we will take i am not disputing the quality of the portfolio is very important if triple a is there double a is there if you are satisfied we will take it and this segment we would like to grow at around 12 percent this year overall if all together 15 percent growth we want to grow in advances during this year coming to the stressed asset the stressed asset pool has continued to decline for the fourth consecutive quarter um, and partially maybe due to the write-offs uh, do you expect that recoveries in current financial year to exceed uh, the the slippages uh... i know you see when i took charge i have made it a point saying that how the business unit is important for the business 
equally recovery unit is equally important because if you do not get the recovery from there and all the purpose of doing business will be lost so we have created a vertical there headed by a senior general manager if you look at the sensitization what we have brought out to the people the recovery slowly started improving during the covid period the courts were not there mobility was not there and all we were unable to move out for realizing our bad loans but now that things are more normal and all we are able to dispose of these sort of uh, auctions everything is happening so for the last four quarters you can see our debt slippages are negative that is our recoveries are more than the slippages so that way four quarters when we are able to maintain we feel that the same trend we wish to continue for the further quarter this is one and likewise the existing loans what all are there we have created a collection mechanism and collection vertical we have started because stopping the flow of fresh npas is equally important that is the reason we have brought our sma 30 plus where the susceptibility of becoming npas are much more after 1 and 2 it can become an npa so we which used to be 3.5% some two years back we have brought it to below 1% now so that way absolute control we have that sma 30 plus when i am say it includes gold loan also which may not become npa so that way we are having a tighter control on sma 1 and 2 inflow and uh, the recoveries these two simultaneously are happening they are outpacing the slippages what all we have and where do you see your gross npa number by the end of the year gross npa if you can see our numbers earlier is 8.5 8.8 now we have come down to 5.2 and this year we would like to bring it to below 5 it can be when i say below 5 it can be 4.2 can be below 5 also but the credit what we need to get for that is a net npa net npa is there is a three pronged strategy one can be on account of recovery huge recoveries we have got which used to be 3 4% and all net npa today we can say it is 1.91 so it is on account of the recoveries and second thing the growth in the book also is coming and third thing to some extent prudentially provisioning is also happening all three together going forward our plan is how to bring the net npa to at least 1% by the end of 2023 because we want to put this npa issue in the back burner so that at least we can focus on the growth and what all growth we are getting on that the income what all we are getting straight away without any leakages it will flow, flow straight into the net profit otherwise if provisioning is going on there and all so it is eating away the earnings what all we are making and all that's why we want to once and for all handle the net npa so that in future any slippages are there the recoveries will take care of that and uh, you are clean coming to the margins uh, now your margins expanded by uh, three bps q and q uh, to uh, 3.82% in the first quarter driven by uh, some reduction of cost while the yield on advances were almost flat given that only 30% of your loan book is linked to the external benchmark rate do you think you can sustain this level of margins so there are two components which we need to see our cost of deposits if you look at 4.09 it's a historical low for the bank and many of the banks if you compare ours is a lowest cost now we started increasing the rates and all 50 basis points we have increased in the last one one and a half months and all slowly that starts kicking in and the cost of deposits will go up but other side if you look at it 30% when you are saying the link to eblr the working capital portion of that what all is there already we have passed on along with the rbi as and when they have hiked the rates the term loan component majority of the loans are quarterly repricing so as and when the repricing is there we are passing it on so that way in a matter of 3 months period the whole repricing of the loan ebrr book will be completed and next book is uh, mclr mclr comes to around 55% book that way our total floating rate book is around 85% so the moment deposit cost goes up and automatically mclr also correspondingly will go up we will be able to pass on that cost also to them so that way if you look at it in a rising rate scenario we will be able to repricing our assets faster than the liabilities so that way we are earlier we were giving a guidance of 3.5 for the nim and during the after our results we thought we need to be at 3.75 and we have revised the guidance to 3.75 our intention is to maintain minimum these are the two factors what we thought assets get repriced faster and liabilities in due course at least two to three quarters you will have the benefit of it by the time things will stabilize so 3.75 with the margin you are looking at Yeah, so that's for, the guidance. So for, absolutely, we are keeping in mind. That's why two uh, fundamental pillars on which we are working. One is on a 15% advances growth, 3.75 NIM, and uh, so the credit cost. That is for the provisions. What all we are going to make? 
we are planning 1% because it used to be 2 and half something like that below 1% we want to maintain the credit cost and the slippages which used to be 3 3 and half we want to maintain between 1 and 1 and half these four pillars if we work on that we will be able to comfortably go with roi in the initial remarks you are mentioning roi it was a dream for us to reach that number by Feb march 2023 but by february quarter we are able to reach 1.06 and this quarter 1.09 so progressively we'll take the roi also forward these four levers effectively we have a control on them we are reasonably confident in the ending quarter closing quarter of 23 we will be able to reach roi of 1.2 to 1.25 on that note it was a pleasure talking to you mr babu thank you for thank speaking you. to business standard thank you very much mr manager thank you very much so nice take care b ramesh babu does not seem perturbed about the competition and is confident that the bank will achieve the desired market share the government, on the other hand, is looking to expand the share of its digital offerings. In her budget speech, the finance minister announced the launch of 75 digital banking units. Our experts explain what digital banking units are in the Banking for You section. Digital banking units, or DBUs, will fundamentally change how banks onboard and service their customers. Digital banking has emerged as the preferred banking service delivery channel in the country along with brick and mortar outlets. One could say that DBUs will build on this scaffolding. What is a DBU? According to the RBI, digital banking refers to present and future electronic banking services provided by a bank for the execution of financial, banking and other transactions through electronic devices, equipment over websites, mobile phones or other digital channels. It will be a sub-segment of existing retail banking. Retail banking will now be subdivided into digital banking and other retail banking. This segment would include business related to existing or prospective digital banking products. When you transact at a DBU, the emphasis will be on self-service. Think of it as a scaled up version of an automated teller machine. At the front end or distribution layer of digital banking, each bank would choose suitable smart equipment such as interactive teller machines, interactive digital walls, self-service card issuance devices, and the like. Each DBU must offer certain minimum digital banking products and services, both on the liabilities and assets side. This would include conventional banking services with some digitally value-added services. Over time, a DBU may offer more structured and custom-made products. They will also have the freedom to offer any other digital product or service in addition to the minimum bouquet to cater to the specific needs of the service area. The idea of the DBUs was flagged by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in the Union Budget this year when she said that 75 DBUs in 75 districts are to be set up to commemorate the 75 years of independence. So what happens if you, as a customer, are not digitally savvy? As RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das said on June 17, the plan should also factor in those sets of customers who may not be digitally savvy and who may want to engage physically with the bank. With DBUs, the digital swipe and punch will get a huge fillip. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. The country's focus on rates and the RBI policy is as unwavering as the next wave of digital innovations. In its recent policy, the Reserve Bank of India raised the rates by another 50 basis point. The sole focus of the Monetary Policy Committee is to tackle inflation, but what would its next step be? While experts are clear that the central bank will raise rates, Kamal Bandopadhyay believes the next rate hike would be 35 basis points in the September meeting. Let's listen in to his conversation. Hi, Tamal. Thanks for coming on the show again. Thank you. Now, first of all, a congratulation is in order. You projected a 50 basis point hike and we are at that 50 basis point. RBI listened to you. Now, in this week's column, you have taken the discussion forward. 
you're talking about the next meeting and you're preempting a 35 basis point hike. But you have that discussion between a 25 and a 35 basis point. Now, can you explain the rationale for your expectation of a 35 basis point hike? Uh, thanks, Ishan. Um, the rate has to go up. That's for sure. Reserve Bank of India is distinctly uncomfortable with inflation. And uh, so how do you push it up? Uh, and typically, we are used to 25 basis bips hike and 50 bips hike. But there is one governor who had actually uh, deviated from the conventional path. Um, so that has encouraged me. Uh, 35 is not as high as, as 50 or not as low as 25. So it's midway. And it also uh, reaches a milestone 5.75. So then possibly the next rate hike would be 25 basis point because he's talking about soft landing economy. So it doesn't give any, one doesn't want to give any junk, uh, no nasty surprises. So rate hike is forgiven. Um, not only once it could be, it could be, it doesn't necessarily mean that every quarter we will see a rate hike. He could uh, press the pause button, wait and watch depending on the uh, move of inflation uh, growth as well as what's what's happening in US. Now we've discussed this before because you're talking about a 5.75% in September. Is the 6% repo rate a possibility by December? And will we breach the 6.5% mark which you discuss in your column as well being the highest rate ever in recent times? It's possible. It's possible. So 5.75 I think is given in September and then next uh, is December. Now whether the next 25 bips come in December or RBI presses the press button, we don't know because it's a very uncertain situation. So like if the crude price plunges and if we see that till if we see the inflation is really going down because thanks to RBI, uh, despite all the analysts and economists are seeing that inflation would be probably less than what RBI had estimated, but RBI has stuck to it. Um, you know, it, it has not changed its inflation projection. So, but as things could change if, uh, and you know, November is the elections, uh, US elections. Yeah. So if we see by December that US Federal Reserve is through, through with its rate hike and uh, inflation is at a much lower level than what we had anticipated, probably RBI have a, uh, can press the press, press button um, in December and then go for a hike in January. Press button not to pause, not for, for good, but to take stock of the situation. Mm -hmm. So as of now, both possibilities are there. Uh, the next rate hike is given and December, it may, in that case, we may see 6% by December. In this in uncertain environment, only certainty is rates will go up and not by 50 bips anymore, I guess. Uh, so that's it. Now in between, it doesn't mean that Every policy will will go for a rate hike. It might not. Uh, RBI may 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 pause and uh, look around and see, take stock of the situation, and can do it at the next. And what about the six point five percent mark? Because that was the second part of my question. Yeah, we, we are all you know the entire world is reeling against negative rates, which means savers' money is being eroded, which means inflation is higher than the much higher than the. Uh, policy rate. So we need to bring it back and Reserve Bank of India Governor uh, Mr. Das post policy conference showed his concern about negative rate. We want to push it to the, uh, bring it to the positive region. Now how do we do it? If one year down the line we are talking about 5% uh, uh, inflation in the, uh, in the first quarter of next fiscal year. So if you want to have a positive rate, so definitely you need to have at least 6% and uh, in the past, we had even higher positive rate. So we don't know the inflation uh, exactly what's going to happen. So definitely, if you want to, and we, we want to bring down the inflation to 4%, um, that's what, for the first time, Reserve Bank of India said, he's not talking about the band. He did not speak about only the ba band that, uh, say, up, up to 6%. He has spoken about 4% also. Yeah. So to have the, the positive interest rate, Ideally, you should go even beyond 6%. Now, is it 6.25 or 6.5? Again, uncertain time. 
but certainly RBI may not stop at six to ensure a positive interest rate. It it probably will go beyond six. Now you've talked about the savers. I would like to talk about the mortgage market. What do these rate hikes mean for the normal average person who's paying an EMI? Definitely, that's uh, I mean uh, that that side of it. Yes, uh, um, it, the credit growth we have, what we have been seeing, uh, is primarily driven by uh, retail loans. If you see the bank balance sheet uh, over the past few years, uh, the the portion of corporate loan is going down and retail loan is going up. I know the retail loans are auto loans and 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 home loans and personal loans, so on and so forth. Uh, they will be definitely affected because uh, bulk of the bank loans are now uh, linked to the external benchmark. And particularly the MSME segment for the past two years, each and every MSME loan is, uh, is, is attached to the external benchmark. Every, every loan which is linked to external benchmark, which is every MSME loan taken in the past two years, and most of the... Uh, most of the other retail loans like uh, home loans and auto loans, they have gone up or are going up. It's a question of time. Banks are very fast in raising rates. So they have to pay more. Now, depending on your age, I think up to a certain age, banks uh, do not want to increase your EMI. Uh, it increases, uh, it extends the period of uh, uh, repayment. So to, uh, 15 years can become 16 years or 17 years. But by the time you cross 70 years, uh, in that case, they would prefer to hike your EMI. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there will be either stretching the loan repayment period in for the most cases, but for few cases, we'll be hiking the EMI as well. Uh, and most importantly, the new buyers, new home buyers, and new auto automobile buyers or two wheeler buyers, they have to upfront pay more. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so there is no escape. So definitely uh, there is a possibility of uh, o o A, uh, uh, slowing down the retail loan growth and B, uh, quality of assets. Both could be the concern because not everybody may be in a position to pay off the higher rates. Uh, and this will also particularly, you spoke about mortgage market, the low, uh, the low cost housing market. Um, my information is anecdotally I am seeing there is a slowdown in demand. Now, it's very interesting you talk about the credit growth. The credit growth has held steady at 14% as per the RBI figures. Now, with the rates rising, the RBI has kept the growth forecast at 7.2%. Does it sit well with the narrative? Isn't it supposed to come down? Well, if you see that uh, almost every agency has brought down the um, growth estimate, but RBI has stuck to it. Uh, I think we need to wait and watch. Probably we would see uh, there is some tinkering both in the growth estimate as well as the inflation estimate. Because Reserve Bank of India has also stuck to the inflation estimate, while everybody is talking about the inflation could be lower. So probably growth could be lower 7.2 to 7%. Probably inflation could be also marginally lower. But for the timing, RBI has stuck to it. So we might see uh, some tinkering probably uh, in the next meeting. That's about it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. We hope to see you next week again. Thank you. Tamal also points out that rates may breach the 6% mark in December itself. He also expects the central bank to tinker with inflation and growth estimates in the next policy. We had asked you whether the government should go for the privatization of banks or not. The response has been phenomenal. And we thank you for your time. According to our poll, two-thirds of the respondents said that the government should move forward with privatization. How quickly the government acts on it and in what manner remains to be seen. For this week, we want to ask you a question related to the monetary policy given the recent rate hike. Should RBI raise the repo rate even higher to curb inflation? You can respond on our website, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. We'll be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. with the poll responses and more news and analysis. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. 
For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.